Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host today. And let me just uh, just basically give you another review. Uh, it, let's see, an insight, if you will, as to what we're trying to do here at Oregon Voters Digest. Besides covering issues uh, that will give you the information and direction or whatever, uh, we that's one of the things to inform and educate you about whether it be political issues, or whether it be issues in your community, whether it be issues of the state, or, or, or the like, or whatever. And especially those of, of veterans. And as you notice, I'm wearing my cover here as a Vietnam vet. Uh, one, of the, one of the focus that we have here at the Oregon Voters Digest is outreaching the vets and making sure that they're receiving their benefits. And again, thanks for serving vets. Okay? But that's basically what we're doing. So what I thought we'd do to, to start off this particular segment, and from the future for that matter, is that I'll always be a little segment in regards to reaching out to vets. And, um, and it's kind of unique that I'm able to do this at this point in time because I've been doing it for quite some time. But we just recently received, uh, the VA just recently received and published the Healthcare Benefits Overview, uh, 2017 edition, volume number one. I don't know if you can see that. Can we see this? I'm just going to see if they can get that cover there on there pretty good. If not, I'll change it to another, another camera. Is that okay? Good. That's, that's the new, that's the latest edition of the uh, benefits as far as health care is concerned, and also uh, monetary benefits, too. And what I was going to do is that I was just going to read you some of the most important points here at this point in time, and that is, uh, uh, this is what it is, is is health care benefits overview 2017 edition volume one. Remember the, the one, the, uh, I had a sort of a read of the digest kind of, a, it was about, it was the ASAW or whatever, and, but, but the bottom line, it was somewhat similar, but this one is very, very comprehensive. It gives you all the information that you need, if you will. And the other thing is, uh, which is most important, is that if you are a veteran, yeah, there are many changes at this point in time, but the bottom line is that if you are a veteran, it's so easy to enroll now to find out whether or not you can receive health care. And it's, it's the best in the world, as far as I'm concerned, anywhere you go. I mean, once you register as a vet, you can go anywhere you want. You will be, uh, you, you will be taken care of, in all due respect. And so, uh, let me give you some ideas here. Now, if you're interested in enrolling, and you can find out, in fact, you can, you can even do it uh, by phone. Uh, and notice it right here, it says veterans can complete applications for enrollment in VA health care by telephone without the need for a signed paper application. VA staff members will collect the needed information and process the enrollment application for an enrollment determination. To apply, call one 877 222-8387. Again, 1-877-222-8387. Monday through Fridays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, it's a three-hour difference here in the in Oregon aspect of it. So, so you're talking about you can go, you can call up as, as high as 11 o'clock, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? 11 o'clock. Okay, good. But uh, again, that number is 1-877-222-VETS. Uh, uh, 8387 1877 222 Also, or you can go online. You can go online if you're interested in using the computer when applying online at vets.gov. V E T S dot gov. Veterans simply fill out the application and electronically submit it to the VA for processing. The VA will search for your supporting information through its electronic information system and will collect you, co contact you if. It is unable to verify your military service. And what I mean by that is normally if you, if you go in to and make application personally, you normally, in the past, it used to be a, a DD-214. You can still do that, a DD-214. But now they're giving you the opportunity to call on the phone and give them your service number, which is a, you, you got your, your Social Security number is your service number. They'll normally ask you for your last four after you're in the system whenever you're provide, getting any services of that matter. But, yeah, you can just go to for applying online. You can go to vets.gov, V-E-T-S dot G-O-V, okay? And, uh, and then what they will do, they'll just go through the, as, as they say, the communication system, and they'll check out your Social Security number right there, and, and there's your name and all your vitals, if you will, that's there. And uh, 
But on the other hand, if you, uh, uh, for help filling out the application, again, like there'll be an application online, you can give them a call again at 1-877-222-8387, again, at that same time, that number. By mail, you can, all, you can either mail it in if you like. You can mail it in and uh, you mail it to Health Eligibility Center. Health Eligibility Center. It's uh, Enrollment Eligibility Division at uh, 2957 Claremont Road, Suite 200. And that's Claremont, C-L-A-I-R-M-O-N-T, Claremont Road, Suite 200, Atlanta, comma, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, okay, 30329-1647. Again, Atlanta, Georgia, 30329 one six four seven. If you want to mail it in, you can do that too. And then, like I said, you can apply at any VA health care facility in these United States. They're all over the place. All you have to do is, you, if you if you got your iPhone or whatever, you can Google VA location for your your, your nearest veteran VA administration. You go in there, and they'll tell you that if you want to sign up, they'll direct you to a person, and that person would basically do the same thing right there. So it's whether it's by mail, by online. Or just by giving them a phone and giving and just being interviewed over the phone, you can actually enroll in probably the best health care uh, healthcare benefits in these United States in the country, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then you, you can also select where you want to receive your care. And that's kind of like the primary care aspect of it. As part of the enrollment process, veterans will be given the opportunity to select the VA medical center uh, or community-based outpatient clinic where they prefer to be seen. To find a facility near you, visit the VA's directory. You can check them out in terms of where, wherever you live. You can just go to www.va.gov, G-O-V, forward slash directory. Again, www.va.gov, forward slash directory. And what you will do then is that uh, the reason why they're going to assign you that way, you will be, you'll be assigned to a doctor. I mean, you'll have some a physician there that will be your physician, your personal physician, if you will, once you get into the system, and uh, and so that that's a that's that's quite a deal. Again, like this is the first one, this is the first, this is the, the latest edition of uh, that I'm reading from, and I would suggest very strongly that. And by the way, when you well, even when you're calling them up to about being eligible for enrollment, and once as, as my understanding, once you once you are enrolled and whatever. They'll send you your certification letter aspect of it or whatever, and they'll also send you a copy of this particular publication. It's beautiful. Now you have to wait around. We were having problems sometimes uh, getting the, the, the other ones because uh, they were limited, and then uh, they were pretty little limited to, to various uh, uh, entities uh, in, the, uh, in the VA. And so I'd been getting a number of them, but I had to I had to get out there and search and whatever I had to do to, to pick them up. But I got them and got them to a number of the vets. But now, especially if you are a vet, now remember, I mean things have changed. You know, like the old requirement about uh, about uh, let, me, let me throw something else out to you real quick. Let me see if I can give you here's some other things about this. Uh, you don't need to take additional steps to meet the health care law coverage standards. Okay, you need more reasons to enroll. These are some of the some of the points that they raise up in regards to why why you need to you need to go on and enroll. Uh, medical care rated among the best in the U.S. Immediate benefits of health care coverage. Veterans can apply for VA health care enrollment at any time. No enrollment fee. No enrollment fee. Monthly premiums are deductibles. Most veterans have no out of pocket costs. No. No, uh, no out-of-pocket costs. Some veterans may have to pay small copays for health care or prescription drugs. More than 1,700 VA medical facilities available to get your care. That's throughout the United States. 1,700 VA medical facilities to get your care. This means your coverage can go with you if you travel or move. So anyway, freedom to use other plans with, with your VA health care, including Medicare, Medicaid, Tricade, or private insurance, you can also, i.e., uh, you have the, the opportunity to, con you know, the old Social Security aspect or whatever. But if you're over 65 years old and you got two plans, well, guess what? You got the VA and then you've got uh, your Social Security aspect of it. If you opt not to do the Social Security, guess what? You're paying for that Social Security. You're paying for that health care and Social Security, the Medicare. And so if you don't, if you opt to say, well, okay, fine, I don't want to do that. I just want to deal with the VA, you can opt to do that. 
and uh, and then all of a sudden <laughs> your your social security check will increase. <laughs> that's another that's another good piece, if you will. Uh, okay, and then if if veterans are who are traveling or spending time away from their preferred facility may obtain care at any VA health facility across the country without having to reapply. Remember that, without reapply. Under VA's medical benefits package, the same medical benefits are generally available to all enrolled veterans. I mean, across the board, okay? So, so like I said, let me remind you again that uh, this is here, it's ready to go. And, and I gave you that phone number. Come on, I got another vet just joining us. You didn't know he was one too. He's one of those fly boys <laughs> from the Air Force type. But Bob is a, a vet, and uh, and I and, and I was just um, I was just sharing with him, Bob, the the new the new uh, enroll the, the new pamphlet that the that the government gets, sends out for the VA. It's right. an awesome awesome piece. I used to have the small ones, but now what happens is that you can enroll by phone. You can enroll. You can enroll by online. You can enroll by mail, <laughs> and then all you need is your social security number and your name. They'll just check out your record. That's your DD-214 normally. Mm -hmm. now, in the past, what they did they, 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 you do, you had to bring in your DD-214 with you. Right. Whatever. You don't have to worry about it. You can do it over the phone. And if they have any problem with it, because what they'll do, they've got, they, they've got us on that, on that technology aspect of it. They can pretty well figure out who you are, where you are, where you've been, all that good stuff. And then they'll lay it out right off the bat. Yes, you, you do qualify. Yeah. You got me? Mm -hmm. And then if you've had any, any, any uh, military problems or whatever in the past or whatever, that's all on your record. That's all on your record. If you, if you need eyeglasses or hearing aid. And my point is that a lot of times what happens is that, uh, let's say, for instance, you're talking to someone on the other end of the line. Um, a lot of times vets don't realize that they have benefits because it, it, we all have MOSs, right, military occupational right. skill. And let's say, for instance, if you were on line, let's say in the Air Force, as far as... Uh, as far as uh, uh, aircraft, uh, fixed aircraft wings, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. A lot of times you'll have problems with your ears, yeah, and your eyes, and this, that, and the other. And uh, and so a lot of guys don't know. And so they were wearing glasses like you, mm -hmm. and you're eligible. And so all of a sudden now you're getting glasses every year. They they they, they basically give you another set every year. Check your eyes out for sure. Check your hearing out mm -hmm. as an aspect of it, and anything that could be related as, as it relates to your time in service. So if you're hearing noises and problems like that around props and this, that, right. and the other, or you're having issues with, again, PTSD, is it's a huge one. And a lot of folks don't realize that they have it, uh, you know, when they when they get out of the service. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're having these strange issues and this, that, and the other, and dreaming, uh, uh, not being able to sleep and all this, that, and the other. And so all of a sudden you're eligible for that piece. So at the end of the day, you, they, they will rate you. And if you rate in certain percentage areas, if you will, you not only will you be c compensated, for any of the rated areas, mm -hmm. but in some cases, the more uh, it's from one to a hundred percent. Okay, and if in fact, you, let's say for instance, if, if you uh, you're married, and uh, and you are, say you get to, I'm going right to the top at a hundred percent, the VA will then from that point on carry your wife's health care for life. Can't beat that. And then the other thing, the other bit is like for instance, uh, if you've got kids, if mm -hmm. you will, they will they will pick up the tab for the for the college education, uh, the, the whole nine yards. I mean, there, there are many, many benefits, and we want to thank the American people for, 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 for allowing them to do those kinds of things. And uh, and this is a nonpartisan act, meaning that there's no president that, that says no to the benefits of the vets, mm -hmm. okay, because they're deserving it. Right. So I would suggest very strongly, please call that number. I mean, there's a lot of other things, but you guys, I said, but the first thing, get your card. Yeah. All you have to do is call 1-877-222-8387, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So it goes up to 11 o'clock up in this area. So that'd be three hours p.m., three hour difference. That'd yeah, be five yeah. o'clock our time. Yeah. Gee, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm yeah, going you the went way. the other way. I went the other way. Yeah. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> so it gives you my PTSD <laughs> show. <laughs> okay. So this is a great. This is a great one, Bob. So this is uh, we're reaching out. We're going to always try to do something at the beginning of the show, and hopefully we'll do this if you, once once you get to doing your piece. Okay. We'll throw that piece out there. But I'm going to give you this one to start with. All right. And just I'll, keep that. Being. I'll read you, this. You pray, and, you, and you will call and apply. Hopefully. All right. I'm most certain please, will. please call and and that, that way. In all due respect, by calling and actually getting your ID, and I think you've you've seen my ID before, right? Yes. You've seen those IDs, right? right? And just for the benefit of those who are out there, and by the way, I'm talking about mothers or, or, or relatives or whatever, and if you know for a fact your relative or your husband 
uh, had spent some time in the in the military, it would be of your benefit to really give that give. You can call them up yourself if mm -hmm. you want to, but let them know what's going on. If you got power attorney or whatever is necessary, you can do that also too. But this is the card. You got just a regular card aspect of it. It tells you the the the, uh, the, the branch of service that you're in. Mm -hmm. Give your logo on that. And if you're blind or whatever, you, they got that piece there because they've got they're hiring vets, you know, sometimes that are this, that, and other. Sure. So they can, they can, but it's all there. And the, and the most important your part photo on it. Most important part of it is check and see. Yes, check and see. Yeah, yeah, check and see, check and see. But if you got your DD two fourteen, mm -hmm. you 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 be, you benefit. Yeah, hey, I know I have mine because you have. To, if you ever decide to do a home loan, you better have it. Yeah, that's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and the other thing too, they've got. Uh, you know, you see a lot of these outside services talking about uh, doing things for vets, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things that that many of us, especially in the HVAC aspect of it. We're always having some major problems from the standpoint. If you didn't have the hundred percent, you get a you get all of the advantage. There's dental, right? There's the dental aspect of it. Well, they've they've cited out, they've identified. You can see it in that in the in the, that book there, that uh, they've identified two major ones: MetLife, I think, and, and and another entity. But they will give you a major discount, if you will, for dental. But you see, like you said, a lot of times you see these outside entities mm -hmm. are saying, "Well, we, we you know we we represent vets, this, that, and the other." Well, no. Uh, check to the book. That's it. Ch check to the ones that have been vetted, which is a very, very important piece. Without a doubt. Yes, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out. Bob got it on the on the end of it. He'll probably continue doing that piece also, too. But now what we're going to do, we're going to go on and see whether we can do a show. Uh, and uh, we're going to we're gonna talk about some various issues. And as I've indi indicated to you before, when I first opened up the show, is, uh, the idea of the Voters Digest is to inform and educate. Right. To inform and educate to make our way of life better. So whether it be political, non-political, or anything of that nature, we hopefully we're trying to inform you and, and educate you about issues that will better our way of life here in these United States, right. or more specifically, Oregon. Right. And more specifically, Oregon. Well, they, what we're going to do today is that uh, uh, Bob, Bob talked about, uh, he brought up an issue about divide, right? Right. Okay, What's your, what, what would be a de definition, Bob? Well, how would you... How would you de de identify it? Uh, well, in the, in the context of which I was talking about it is dividing, uh, house divided. Okay. And, you know, one of the things that uh, one of our presidents, one that you love, you talk about, you love, Abraham Lincoln, okay. when he ran for, when he ran, when he was getting ready to run for president and he was talking to the, uh, to the Senate in Springfield, uh, Illinois, mm -hmm. he talked to them about a house divided, mm -hmm. you know, and at that time, there was a lot of things going on, just like it is today. And uh, he said, a house divided will fall. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't make that up. It's a scripture in the Bible that tells you that mm -hmm. a house divided will fall. And today, we are suffering from a house divided. So the question becomes, we know there's a division of the house. Mm -hmm. How do we de develop unity? Mm -hmm. Because when you divide your house, strange things will seep in. You know, you're on one side and something, something, someone else is on the other side and down the middle, all the rodents are coming in. And we can look at that now and we can see uh, nations that would never have said the things that they say that they're saying today. They see that we're divided. They're beginning to do, say and rattle their sabers at us. Uh, nations are beginning to say, well, we'll determine what the outcome will be in their elections, in their whatever they are trying to do. We'll sneak in there because they are divided, you know, and will cause chaos. Mm -hmm. So we have to, so that's one. The other one is, why is our nation so divided? Mm -hmm. It started long before uh, the gentleman that's uh, in the White House was, was there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it started before the, the, his predecessor was there. You know, and so we have to, we have to look at each other and begin to understand that the reason our, there's a reason that we are divided, and what is it? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, our pride? We don't want to let go of the past. Well, 
if that past is about slavery, mm -hmm. you need to let it go because, uh, you know, an average black person is not going back into slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it's about sharing, you need to look at what you're doing and say, is the way I'm living today, will that suffice for me and my kids and my grandkids by holding others back, mm -hmm. not letting them be a part of, mm -hmm. trying to stop them from becoming a part of? Maybe, maybe at this point in time, for the benefit of our viewing audience, mm -hmm. and you're right, we, we've... we've, we've, we've uh, We've got good background. Oh, yeah. We've been around for a couple of days. Hey. And, and and we were fortunate enough, we've had the type of an education that was, that was given us the opportunity to talk about that reference. Right. We've had those references. As you mentioned about uh, former um, President Abraham Lincoln. Right. What, what brought up this issue, if you will, of race mm -hmm. at that point in time. And uh, th there was a, he brought it up to the table and uh, there was a divide then. That's right. In many ways. And the, the houses were divided, even though he brought up the issue, and he identified with one of the house, mm -hmm. and even some of the, some of those folks in that house, which unless he was a Republican, didn't like that idea. That's right. You know, and uh, it's almost like the Bernie Sanders situation, kind of, kind of the same mm -hmm. concept. But the fact of it is, our history has dictated that we have been divided for a long time. Right. Now, normally in a, in a uh, when you got two people running against one another, that's the divide to start with. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And, then, and, and, and that's kind of like saying, but a lot of folks don't understand why we, we come through that debate. It's not a situation where, where, where we the people decide, let's say we got five major items that we need to resolve. And that whoever run, the two people who are going to be running or three or four or five people mm -hmm. who are going to be running, and they said would have to, i.e. adhere, uh, identify with themselves with that, said, okay, what is their solution for, the, let's say, these five mm -hmm. issues? And the other person with their solution to five, at the end of the day, uh, whoever gets the top four or, or the top five or whatever, that would be the, the leadership for that day. Mm -hmm. And then we would have, we would clearly understand what the focus is going to be and what the solution is going to be right. and how do we fit in regards to solving that solution. So, uh, and, and, and the reason why I brought that piece up, and you're right on with what you're saying, is that we don't teach that in the schools. Right. If we taught that in education way back when, when you think about it, even, the, even the, that, that divide was really the time to really talk to why we've got to be together. Mm -hmm. because, it, 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 because, because that civil war really divided this country. Right. They, they call it North and South. But again, we're talking... From, from the idea that it should be in the classroom. You know, we, we've just had enough background to go out and reach out there right. to get that information. And we see all of the negatives and the positive and this, that, and the other. But, but like you said, uh, you, here we are today. We're still doing the same thing. And all I'm saying is that it, it, it needs to be in our education system. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how negative it was or whatever, it needs to be in the books so people could understand when, in many ways, where do we go from here? Because it's, it's a major divide right now. Oh, yes. Well, the, the thing is, in our education system, and I, I just got off the phone with a good friend of mine. Uh -huh. He happened to be in Georgia with a number of kids uh, going to uh, different schools down there uh, to uh, explore their opportunity to attend them, either in uh, aeronautics. Oh, aviation, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, or some other endeavor. And we, uh, you know, we got into it, uh, into the conversation, and the question was, what is it that, and I'm going to say this because I'm tired of saying minority. Right, 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 right. And right. my reason for being tired of saying minority is, it looks like when we say minority, everybody else get but us. Yeah. So we have to begin to say black, mm -hmm. and we have to say, ask that question. When you're in that room, ask that question. What are you going to do to improve the life of black people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because around us, we can see others beginning to percolate up. And we're still at the, we're still the grounds on the bottom of the coffee pot. That opened the door. Yes. <laughs> you know, they use us as a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. And then bingo, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And they don't look back. Mm -hmm. You know, not for us. And so it's time for us to look out for us. You know, and I'm not saying separatism. 
I'm saying just let them know that if you start a business, hire a black person. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a job opening at your place, tell a black person. Mm -hmm. Don't go, well, I don't want them to embarrass me because if they get the job, they're going to do something and everybody's going to look at me. I don't know the average white person that says mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I, got, I helped them get the job. It's up to him to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we have to get on that. And, and we have to begin to look out for each other. You know, the easiest thing in the world to do is pick someone off when there's only one of them. But when there's a group, and that's the one thing that uh, that during the during the Reagan administration and the Bush administration they did. They said uh, they brought in people that that agreed with them, and black people in particular that said, "I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. Didn't nobody help me." Well, that's not true, because somebody had to open that door. They had to be the first black through that door for you to get there. Uh, and it's all these things that, you know, I'm so, I am I thought I could retire and get out of this yeah. and let others begin to push that, you know, because the foundation was laid where and I started. We took, we took uh, heed of that foundation and began to try to move it forward. Well, we became older. Now we're looking, we thought others would come and try to move it forward, but they want to, you know, everybody's beginning to scatter. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the tree is dying, and you're over here looking at the leaf. Mm -hmm. Well, you need to be at the root. Mm -hmm. And the root of the issue is jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to stop the violence in the streets, get someone a job. Mm -hmm. That's how simple it is. You want to lower the, the prison population, put people to work. Or may, or use the word may, uh, make make the jobs available available with the understanding that you have to I e you have to earn it earn, you have to earn it that's and, it I and, mean and that's that's plainly said that's it I live I'm from Chicago where the government in in the city of Chicago thought wow these black people are living in the slums over here so we're gonna build these nice shiny new projects and we're gonna put them in there. And they began to build projects, and black people came, and within two years, nobody wanted to be there. They were, the kids were wetting in the, in the staircase, in the stairways, throwing things off the balconies. Now you go to Chicago, and if you find a project, they, they look like they're in prison because they had to come in and put wires all the way from roof to roof. You know, but, but on that same point, now think about it. They put that together. Yeah. Who put that together? It'd they did. It. Now, it'd be interesting to yeah. see who who basically came up with the legislation mm -hmm. and who voted for the legislature. And, right. and it takes both houses then, both sides to do that. But someone had to initiate it. Right. You got my point? And that initiator should have been talking to the same thing that you're talking about, you know, from the standpoint, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity. And the reason why we're doing this is to be really, and then it's going to have impact on the rest of the, uh, the rest of the population, right. not just a black thing. Right. It was just basically the, this situation is, well, better our situation as a whole nation. If in fact we can't start start resolving some of these issues, i.e., housing and jobs and things of that nature. Right. But the, but the, but that's a that's a major point. Who and a lot of times we don't ask that question. Mm -hmm. And all due respect, that's that house divided routine. Right. We don't ask the, the point, point about who was the source, who wrote the first piece of legislation <laughs> that did it. It had to have a name. It did. A name and several other names. Mm -hmm. Right. You got me. And and I bring that up because you said you said Chicago. I think about uh, oh you know in that area. I, I think I think about um, uh, oh gee whiz I had his name oh, wow wow transportation he was a transportation uh, representative. Um, it'll come up to my mind. Yeah. Why don't we take a short break and then we'll look it up? Yeah, and we'll Google it. Yeah, we'll Google, Google it. it. <laughs> We're gonna take a short break, folks. And we'll be right back. Bob Williams and I, Bruce Broussard. Uh -huh. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Yeah, well, welcome back, folks. Again, uh, I've got Bob Williams on, and uh, we're talking about the divide, you know, and, and uh, everyone's looking for that needle in the haystack for today That's because it. it's, it's disrupting our way of life. It really is across the board. And so all of a sudden, he has to come back to the table. I'm at the table, mm -hmm. and we're trying to figure out, and a lot of other, other folks who figured they had the answer, they're out there at the table also, too. Right. And we got all these young folks out here. They need a job. And when, they, and when they look at those commercials about Nike, it's not like uh, back in the old days, you can go to Kmart and pick up a pair of tennis shoes for, <laughs> for $4, dollars, right? Right. <laughs> now it's, a, it's $100 or $400. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? And but, you know, one of the things I was, I was uh, watching, or, what, a matter of fact, I was talking online to one of the, one of the guests, uh, Fred. Yeah, Fred Stewart. Uh, Fred Stewart. And, you know, he, online he was talking about how much it costs to live in Portland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm like, wow. That's when heavy. did that happen? Yeah, seventy to eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, and so if you don't have a seventy or eighty thousand dollar job, you need a mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you can't be casting people aside yeah. nowadays yeah. because that's what they have done to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I look at where I live. When I first moved out to Clackamas, I mean, it, it didn't take me any time to get from point A to point B. Yeah. Today. I mean, on my street on Sunnyside, you can it if you start on 92nd there at the freeway and try to get up to 132nd, it can take you 15 minutes from t at two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I mean, the traffic is just unreal. And I went up to 172nd, and they have just put in maybe 200, 300 more apartments up there build a new Fred Meyer and center in there. And the one thing I don't see is black people with a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to understand, not only do we want a job, but we want an opportunity to own it as well. Mm -hmm. But like you said, again, going back with that first day when you made the point about seven to eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. Now, in order to get to that seven to eighty thousand dollars, in many cases, you can be blue collar, too. But you got to, uh, uh, if not that, you got to be college educated, in most cases a master's, or better yet, when you start thinking about how did we get to that particular point, the demands, if you will, and how do you, you differentiate, we got, we got, we had a thing, an era called baby boomers. That's right. And it was normally the war, right? And then now their kids have grown up. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay? we have. And then now we got their kids coming up behind them. The Y I mean? generation, and then, the and X and, generation. And, and then we went, we went out basically and, and, and outsourced. We, we outsource those jobs to foreigners, if you will, mm -hmm. in many ways, saying because they're not educated, the kids are not educated, whatever. And so all of a sudden we said that was the justification for going outside of these United States as opposed to providing jobs here locally. Mm -hmm. And that was across the board. Yeah. You got me? And so when you start thinking about the majority of these new babies, and I, uh, the majority of these adults, they don't look like black mm -hmm. in, in many ways. So it's a toughie. But then going back to the affirmative action thing, or going back to the Lincoln Day aspect of it, mm -hmm. if in fact we had established parity and equality back in those days, way back when, then it's competition. Right. You you either have the you either have the education or you have the wherewithal to get the job or not. Mm -hmm. But but unfortunately, that's not the case. You're right. Right. And remember, right before we broke, that we, we thought about how it sort of like what 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 aspect of of the economics of our government. Uh, really brought this on to begin with, uh, in, in front of that, and that was the Highway Administration mm -hmm. and Perrin Mitchell. Yeah. Perrin Mitchell was from Illinois. What part of? He was from uh, he Gary. Was from, uh, he was from uh, uh, outside of Chicago. Okay, right, it's right. Called Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana. Gary, right. Indiana. And he was a representative. Yeah. At the time, and he was he was sitting on the Transportation <laughs> Committee, and he too brought up the issue about because the majority of his constituency. Well, black in the community, mm -hmm. and in, the, in his area, right. and just like any other elected official, he's identifying with his voters, i.e., recipients. And he knew that he had a very poor district, and he said, "Let's create jobs around the country." Mm -hmm. And he, he he identified with black folks. That's who basically started transportation. So when he started his push and lobbying within the transportation committee to basically. I uh, say let's set aside some jobs or make those jobs of available. some of those jobs available, whether it be flaggers or uh, not not no high tech because you got to go right. to school for that, but just many menial kind of a work aspect of it. He did that. Well, well, he was on he was on track, but all of a sudden 
there were other entities out there, the divide, house of divide, mm -hmm. that said, well, wait a minute. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going we're gonna to hang on the coattail. Rather than says, okay, fine. This is now, I've got to, excuse the French, I'm interested in the Latino community. Mm hmm and they could have basically lobbied for that piece. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But it's still all American. And hopefully at some point in time, it's across the board and everybody's working. And, uh, but it didn't happen that way. We in America has learned one thing. If it's not me, destroy it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we have to get out of that. Instead of uh, trying to take it away, ask how can I obtain some of that as well? Mm -hmm. You know, and then go to work at obtaining for for your section or set or or race or whatever whatever yeah, right, it right, is right, you're right. doing. Yeah, do, but, do, do your thing. But, no instead, but here's the I keep telling people on a regular base basis, if you take if I have it and you get take it away from me, rest assured you're not gonna get anything mm -hmm. out of that. Mm -hmm. But if I have it and you come to me and say, Say man, how did you get that? I shouldn't be so tight and and not tell you, say, well, you know, I went to school for three years and I did this and I did that. Now you have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what now you can make a determination if you want to try to get what I have and know what to, what mm -hmm. you have to put in mm -hmm. to do it instead of saying, well, he shouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. And then someone over here is going to hear that negative and they're going to agree with you. Yeah. And then next thing you know, Two to five years, it's gone, yeah. and that's and that's the thing that I I came to Portland in nineteen in nineteen seventy one. I look at Mississippi, at Alberta here in Portland, and here in Portland, I look at Mississippi, Alberta, Killingsworth, and I'm like, wow. I remember when black people couldn't get a loan to do anything in the neighborhood. And you go down there today and it's a thriving, it's thriving business. Yeah. And I remember back then when we were bankers yeah. and we almost lost our jobs. Well, you didn't because your, bo your boss understood. <laughs> I almost lost my job yeah. and so did uh, about 40, 50 other people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we had a meeting yeah. on how we were going to teach black yeah, people yeah, how yeah. to fill out, a, fill out an application for a loan. Yeah. You remember that? I remember that. Plus the fact we, had, we, we were having meetings yes. and talking about... Um, other other uh, careers mm -hmm. in the banking industry. That's right. Which I thought was a good thing. You know what I mean? And, and, and I thought it was a real good thing. But again, you know, when we were doing this kind of thing, unfortunately, <laughs> there are some within our own midst that kind of said, okay, fine, uh, they, they're in the house. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get caught up in that deal. But, yeah. but you understand what I'm saying? My I'm in. I thought it was why, a good thing why, to do. Yeah, I'm in. Why am I trying to get you yeah. in? Right, right. Yeah. You know? Right. And I tell you what, when you are the only one in the room, yeah. you can be dismissed yeah. easily. Yeah. But when you have two or three, you know, now they got to, they got to come up with a real good reason yeah. to get you. Yeah. You know, so it's it's you know, I keep saying the security in numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to go back to the old adage. I know when I was growing up, what did my dad tell me? Boy, get your education. Yeah. A good education, can't nobody take it away from you. Mm -hmm. A good education will get you a good job. A good job will get you an opportunity to, to live where you want to live. It'll, get, it'll make your family secure. Mm -hmm. He said all those things. And so I became a member of the A. Philip Randolph Association. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing I began to do was read about A. Philip Randolph and Byatt Rustin and what and A. Philip said he wrote it. I have the book. I'll loan it to anyone that want to read it. It says black people want. No, it said Negroes want what every American want. Mm -hmm. A good job, a safe community, a good education for their kids, opportunity to purchase a home. Mm -hmm. That's the American way. Mm -hmm. Why can't we go back? And I don't say go back. Why can't we revive those ideas and, and realize that we haven't overcome, mm -hmm. you know, 
Uh, I heard a gentleman say, if Martin Luther King was alive today, he wouldn't, we wouldn't know who he is. Mm -hmm. And the reason for it is because we wouldn't follow him. Yeah. Because then, we've, we've drank the Kool-Aid. But think about this now. Again, here we are, like you said, here we are today. That's why we're discussing this issue. Right. It's not something that uh, we just kind of, we could have just walked away from it and just lived our own lifestyle. That's right. But we're saying we got to be responsible. We gotta, we're looking for someone to hand over this baton, if right. you will, the young person to come in there, who happen to be black if possible. And then at the same time, but now we're having to hand this baton, we can't, we can't hand that baton because the other entity on the other house over here is saying no, you right. get me? And so, and, I, and I, the point I'm bringing out is that there's an issue on the table right now here within the city of Portland, in Oregon, mm -hmm. if you will, well known because in most cases, uh, perception wise, uh, more blacks live in the Portland metro area than anywhere in the anywhere state of Oregon. The state. You got me? And a lot of times the activism and whatever always tend to happen here. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of Spread spreads out. out. You got my point? Right. And right now we got a new entity at the table. In fact, someone who, who had been in leadership for quite some time, and I'm talking about Ron Herndon. He was mm -hmm. he started out with the Black uh, United Front, right. but also he had a minister, John Jackson, right. that basically tutored him during that particular time aspect of it. And he spent quite a bit of time in education. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so uh, my point is, is that they spent a lot of time in education. They were really trying to figure out about how do we make sure that we got equality for kids in the education aspect of right. giving the same quality education or whatever. And we've all seen that piece. And we thought through that whole transition that was going to happen. And at the end, at the, end of the day, uh, Ron uh, ended up with... Uh, with uh, uh, was it was it uh, low income uh, child care? Uh, oh, uh, head start. Uh, head start. Head start. And that head start was a very interesting piece because he had mothers of, of these kids because it really started in the churches. Right. So in the churches, but they pulled it out of the church and started a separate entity over here called Head Start. And the next thing you know, Ron was out of town. You know, he became the national chair of Head Start. They mm -hmm. thought it was such a good idea, and they brought this thing all over. So so now you look around. Well, wait a minute, some of these kids were falling through the cracks, and that's, that's who we were trying to address, and now we got the same problem, that we went right back to the same old table. Mm -hmm. But he's back now. Right. He, he's here at the table, and, and, and it's a good point because it's not going away. Mm -hmm. He's there, he's kind of gotten out of retirement, just like we're sitting here right, right. now, and uh, he's, he's brought up, I think Tony Hobson was another guy who was from SEI, mm -hmm. and that's a local school aspect of kind of a, excuse the French, a black school. Right. But like you and I know, when you get to getting graduated, who are you going to work for? Right. You see, I mean, I go so far with that piece, but it was part of the Portland Public Schools. You got me? So now we're at the back of the table. Ron is there. Uh, he's, he's back at the table. And kind of like uh, Tony, I noticed that he's saying, hey, look, he was doing a kind of a beneficial thing because he was getting into the high school arena, and it was probably one of the most popular uh, popular and uh, efficient schools right. in, in, in the state mm -hmm. and where the majority of the kids were black and they were graduating and going to school and college and this, that. And the next thing you know, uh, and I heard this through conversations when he was making the presentation at the, before the school board that uh, he had made a deal with the superintendent of the schools that the reason why he did, he, t he talked about the reason why he was shifted from there and closed up that, that entity, mm -hmm. you got me? And so now he's back at the table, want to put it back to the table, which right. I think is a good gesture. Right. And uh, But at the same time, Ronnie brought up some issues. I thought was that he, he talked about uh, the guaranteeing of, he wanted to make sure they get 5,000 houses in the black community. Okay, that was one area. He wanted to make sure that Jefferson High School was left out of the bond program. To, to, Who to, what? It was left out. It was bond. left out, it, left it out of the bond program. But and, and then and, you know and and uh, and then the other deal was make, giving the opportunity for parents to be able to because they were basically get on buses again. Mm -hmm. They basically okay, fine. These, these parents should be able to come back and go to Jefferson, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But you and I know the history. Mm -hmm. It's a toughie, but it's on the table. Right. And he brought it to the table. Right. And I, I thank him for that. In fact, the first thing I, it came out of my mouth when, he, when I saw him at the table, and et cetera, I said, well, hey, man, you need to run for office. You need to run from a district that we work hard to put together. Mm -hmm. And now we don't have that. But that is our base. Right. That's the base. But, but the idea is that, and you know and I know, that when you start talking about the Jefferson thing, about the building, this, rebuilding the school and this, that, and the other, the system is already pretty well laid out, it, the bond program. There's a reason that Jefferson was left out yes, of that. Yes, 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 You know, and those of us that uh, we haven't, they haven't came out and said, well, yeah. we left Jeff out because, yeah. 
But we are, but we put well, most of us that no. have some seasoning around us understand why. Yeah. Number one, the community is changing. Uh, therefore, the people that care about Jefferson are leaving either can't through, afford it, can, either through death. Right. Uh, right. Selling their home That's right. or whatever, they're moving away. That's right. Uh, my wife went to Jefferson. I did my student observing at Jefferson because I thought I wanted to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so I I understand Jefferson. I've worked with uh, different principals at Jefferson on different different things, uh, but I look around. I don't just get pigeonholed in the one area. Right, right. You know, I, I live in Clackamas, so I looked around Clackamas, the county, and I went, wow. Uh, Lake Oswego, it looked like a college campus. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the other one? Westland, they've, they've built it. Um, Camby, Camus, uh, Camby, Camby. Go out there, out in the country. Uh, Estacada, Malala, <laughs> uh, Clackamas, <laughs> the city of Clackamas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sunny, uh, Happy Valley. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, got their own, build a brand new elementary mm -hmm, school mm -hmm. there. Clackamas High School, build a new high school, took over the grade school that was next to it. And took the other grade school where the, uh, where the old clack was made it a grade school. I mean, all around you guys in Portland, yeah. things are growing. Go out to Beaverton, see what's going on. They're remodeling. Uh, what is it with the Big Five? I used to call it. That was uh, they closed Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, not Lincoln. Uh, Mar uh, Madison. Madison or Marshall, one mm -hmm, of them on, mm -hmm. on uh, 92nd. Mm -hmm. They closed that. They closed uh, Franklin. Yeah. Uh, not Franklin. What's the other school? Adams. And, Adams uh, not Adams. They closed Adams yeah. first. And yeah. they, then they closed the one where the Stoudemire's was yeah. with stars. They closed that school. And they took away busing the kids to mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens to that money? Because money follows... Situation. It's called PCC. So, <laughs> what happened to the money for Both those buses? Yep, yep. You know, no. I bet you no one has ever asked that question. No, no. But but who was sitting at the table? That's, that's what I'm saying. See, you got we we, we, we yeah. understand the politics of the piece, and we're very familiar with the entities that were sitting mm -hmm. at the table. And in all due respect, in all due respect, it was this is what we want to do, mm -hmm. and not inviting the, the, the others at right. the table who were familiar with this other area. Because it takes a, as, as one would say, it takes a village, if you will, to get things resolved. So now all of a sudden, and I'm, I'm, we got we about 10 more minutes okay. at the most, is that now all of a sudden we got the same, it's, it's worse now, worse, it's oh, worse yeah. now than it was then because they've already pretty well fixed these things and people have signed off on it. Yeah, we're and, and not, not just white folks have signed off on it. I know that. Some blacks too. So, but the bottom line is that there's a need, and that's what I'm saying. I'm glad that Ron made the points, but now where do we go from here? Right. You see what I'm saying? And it's not, let's not leave Ron. I mean, uh, I, no, I live in himself. Clackamas, yes. oh, yeah. but I, but you know, my roots are, well, is, in, is, is in Portland. Yes, right. That's you right. Know? That's right. And so we my tree right might be growing, you know, the roots, yeah, right, they sprout. Right, right. So my tree might be growing in Clackamas, right, right. but my roots are over here, right, right, and right. my people are right, here. Right. And so, I want what's best for the community. Right, right. And let's not leave Ron out there by himself. That's right, that's right. That's trying right, that's to, right. so that they can begin to throw daggers right. at him. That's because right. I'm telling you, they'll give, they'll give you that, that opportunity until someone, until they get a, a base over on the other side that's right. against you. Right, right. And then in the middle will back away. Right, 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 and right. you got that fight. And if he's out there by himself, he's going to get killed. But off. he did make a statement that I was a little concerned about. I'm going to throw it on the tape regardless. Mm -hmm. He said when he first initiated the deal, he said, I want to I want to respond to the whole issue of crime and gain type thing, mm -hmm. which is which that, that's, that's a good buzzword. OK, right. but the bottom line, he said he, he wanted to get 200 black men. And then the idea they selected SCI to mm -hmm. meet. And but it wasn't a two hundred black men. 
it was a mixture, but the, but these other issues, mm -hmm. we're not talking to just that. Now, I do understand that's the result if you don't get these other issues resolved. Right. At the end of the day, that's what you're going to have. But like you're saying, those folks are getting shifted out anyway mm -hmm. towards the aggression way. Right. Right. You got me. So so now uh, when I when I noticed when he was he was before the school board aspect of it, I didn't see I didn't see the place packed mm -hmm. with 200 black men. Right. OK. And and to a certain degree, people will uh, react to however they this, that and the other. But like you said, he can't be just out there by himself. Right. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this issue at the table to try to motivate folks to go to the meetings, if you will, and and to motivate and, and to educate folks about the points that he's making and make sure we publicly discuss them. Right. Is it public? You, everybody can't go just to the meetings. Right. You got me. Some folks are kind of feeling, well, gee whiz, somebody might mess with my job mm -hmm. and this, that, and the other. So we have to have those discussions. Right. You've been, you've been out there. I've been out there. And like I said, he's been out there, but he's back home now. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's back to, as director of Head Start on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, right. which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But he's there, okay? But he's there, and we want to make sure that we support the fact that we have issues on the table, right. and some of these issues that he cited are going to be some real tough issues, if you will, to turn around. But like you said, the main thing, black kids are getting out of that. They're, right. they're not there in that community. And and you. and the th and the thing is, if your kid is in school, make sure you ask them one question: What did you learn today? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, my grandson, when he see me, he know what the question is, and he's he's ready. Right. You know, uh, my kids, they all finish school in different areas. Right, right. Uh, rest assured, they they make sure that they and I told them you have to make sure that your kids are knowledgeable. Right. We're not leaving anyone behind. But that's in your our background. Family. But that's your background. Well, that's, that's your commitment. Yeah. You understand what I mean? You got to make the commitment. Right. But but then put, that should be on the table too. Right. And, and and discuss in terms of how that was done. That needs to be laid out. Right. And before we forget, we got about four minutes aspect of it. We want to invite him on the show. Right. Or, or, in fact, we Ronnie, uh, you and and and, uh, and Tony Hobson both come on the show and take an hour. Because ordinarily you, you only had a few minutes, mm -hmm. and it was at a school board meeting aspect of it, and people don't go. Right. Uh, you know, so the key is that you need to communicate this to all everybody because the people have already made the decision on the bond measure to do mm -hmm. this and this and this and that. You know, it, it's a it's a far it's a, it's a tough cry. Right. The old guard is not as not as fluent as they were. That's it. And the other part of it is. We're tired of having the others make decisions for us. Yes, right. That's right. We want to be at the table you when the be, deal is done. to be at the table. So you hopefully know. he can come. Yes. You will invite I, him. Hey, I, I, I'll stop by Please. Tony's office. Yes. And uh, if, if he'll accept me, I'll stop by and yes, talk with yes. him. Yes, Tell him we want them uh, on the show and we right. want to have they can use this as a vehicle to communicate and educate not just black people. But everyone. But everyone, white folks, the, the powers to be, because some things were already voted on mm -hmm. and they were done. I didn't like the bond measure where it is, but the bottom is, hey, it passed. Mm -hmm. It's the lay of the land. We got to we make got, it work. We got to make it work. It ain't about, so finding the other money, that's going to be a whole different ballgame. Right. Because now you have a whole bunch of other people running to the table right. uh, for the same money that he maybe can get a few dollars, mm -hmm. but they're going to want that too. They give you enough to say I did, but not enough to succeed. Yeah. It's going to be a toughy situation right now. That's it. We got a new school board. We got a new school board now. We got Julia Brim Edwards. We're going to try to get her here too yeah. because she was there during Ronnie's time, during Ronnie's time, mm -hmm. and she needs to respond to what he, is, uh, what he was asking. Mm -hmm. How's, what role does she play? In the in the in the in the demands or the or the, or the, or the concerns or the needs, if you will, right. to correct us all, and I, and I think that's where we are. And, and in all due respect, that Bob is going to hopefully be leading that charge as much as possible. I've, well, I've asked I'll him to consider. A, I, I would like to be a soldier. Okay. Along yeah. in that charge, now okay. if they give me a rank, I'll take it. Good. But if not, I will work. You know, because I didn't get here on my own. I understand that. I understand that. And it's time to, for me. To give back even more, right. even when I thought I'd given back, uh, it's time to realize that you just can't stop. Right, right. You know, right, right. you must. You have to make. You got to put somebody, bring someone along. Right, right, you know? right, right. And so I look. I look forward to this. I, I begin to talk to people. I, I'm also going to ask the Democratic Party 
a question. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you what that mm -hmm. question is mm -hmm. on this show. Okay. You're going to have to tune in when I'm here to find out. Okay. Oh, and I, I think I'll do that with the same thing with the Republican Party. Yeah. And uh, I know I know Bill, and uh, I'm going to check that situation out. And the other parties, you know, all, all the rest of them for that matter. My point is that we got to bring everybody to the table. Everybody. Uh, because they, we, we don't want to use this as an excuse from the standpoint we're just looking out for blacks. Mm -hmm. No. We're looking out for Oregonians. For hey. Oregon, across the board aspect of it. But we got this... We got to go back where we started from. That's right. It all started at Lincoln. And he was talking about black folks. Right. <laughs> and so so let, let's get this thing resolved. Put it in the classroom. We got we got to talk about that history yes. aspect. Oh, right? yeah. We okay, good. So so along that line, you're right. You're going to act as a soldier, but at the same time, you're going to get these leaders at the table, and we're going to use this vehicle yes. so that they can e educate us right. and talk about this, that, and the other. And in and, and, and many ways, we're looking for a solution. Right. And there are all those people out, out there that feels that, well, I don't want to do it with that person. I don't want to do it with it this was, person. Okay, yeah. Stop that. Yeah. We don't have time for that's that right, fight. That's right. That's right. We have to come together. Right. I mean, that's the vision. Mm -hmm. We need to be unified. Mm -hmm. And yes, we can sit in a room and discuss it. Yep. There might even be an argument that break out. Mm -hmm. But once this over, once you once you leave that room, you should have a solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's not going to achieve. It's not going to happen. And and what if there's a boat? When the voting is done, everybody worked to make that work. Mm -hmm. Even if you weren't on the side that you were on the losing mm -hmm. end of the vote, you, you're part of the group. Yep. Try to work to make that work. And like Fred said, if you don't, if you don't make at least $70,000, you're going to be gone. That's it. And like someone else told us last week, yep, yep. Uh, if we don't change the way we do things, we're going to be extinct. Okay. On that particular note, mm -hmm. we're going to give it up. Bob? Yeah. Always a pleasure. Always man. a pleasure. Good enough. Okay, folks, you've got the you've got the charge. Look here, we'll see you next week, and we'll have a good show right now, rather than planning it, whatever. But my, my point is that we'll have a good show next week. So please join us, will you? The Oregon Voters Access. I'm Bruce Broussard, and here's Bob Williams. Okay, have a good one.